Welcome to our graduates, to those who have supported the graduates throughout their academic journey, both family and friends, and welcome to our academic and support staff members who have guided our graduates to this point of success. Graduation day is a day where the long hours, sacrifices and dedication to achieve the goals set out are recognized in a formal ceremony. The day signifies a special celebration and is a day where we award or confer qualifications, transforming open window students to become open window graduates. Our class of 2019 graduates are a unique group. They have entered a changed and peculiar world, which no one could have been prepared for. A couple of months into their first working or postgraduate year, the world was hit with a global pandemic and everything we knew and understood, work life, professional trajectory, academic expectation, social practices, all shifted and transformed. However, we as an institution feel confident that our graduates will thrive in this adapted context. A creative education enables one to develop skills to work independently and collaboratively, to be knowledgeable, and also to be imaginative and innovative. These skills are now essential in our current global economy that requires dynamic solutions to age-old tasks and approaches. The class of 2019 is thus Open Window's first graduate group to experience a reimagined virtual graduation within this context of a changed society. I am sure I speak on behalf of the entire Open Window staff to say that we feel privileged to celebrate the virtual graduation day with this class of 2019. And that this celebration will be forever remembered as the first for Open Window. We look forward to hearing how our graduates go from strength to strength in their practice and approach. I would like to remind all graduates and guests attending this virtual ceremony that should you wish to be on campus virtually during this event, you can do so via our virtual window website. A link should be available in your YouTube page comments. But without any further ado, I would like to invite Ross Drakes, the creative director of Nice Work, to please do the opening speech. We're living in a strange time. Instead of standing in front of all of you in a large room, you're all waiting for me to give you amazing knowledge and impart it upon you. I'm in this room with a random camera guy and Micah alone. And essentially what's happened is the world around us is on fire. We're locked in our houses. We've become masters of smuggling cigarettes and bootlegging alcohol. The economy's collapsing. We can't even escape because they've shut our tambo down. And I'm working at home with a two-year-old, so I can tell you that every now and again, I really do dream about that escape. The internet is filled with people who are promising us the new normal. And I'm, I'm struck by a very simple truth that there is no new normal. People are kind of hoping for this world to go back to the way it was. And, and ultimately, I don't think it will ever come back. Is that fine? There's no magic adjustment strategy that will help us right the world to the way it was before this. I think we need to accept that we are living in the new normal. This is it. We've arrived. And you know what? This world we're living in, it sucks. And if you're going to listen to the news or, or God forbid, you're going to go onto Facebook, the outlook for the world is, is pretty bleak. But I don't want to talk about that. So many of the conversations I'm in, they focus on it. And strangely enough, it seems that what people want to talk about first has, has been replaced. So, so we used to talk about the weather or platitudes on family. Um, but now it's this narrative of global panic and collapse. And this doesn't sit well with me. Um, I, I want to talk about something completely different because I have a curse. And, and my curse is optimism. Uh, this drives my wife crazy because I'm, I'm always optimistic about everything. And, and the team, my team at Nice Work get very frustrated with me because I'm always looking for that, that positive side. And I think COVID has given us a bit of a gift. It's 
it's an opportunity that, that we can all use. Um, essentially, we've hit the largest global reset button ever. And I think there's this gift of being able to ask questions now that, that we would have probably been hung for, for asking them in a different time. And I think we live in a time where we get to do some deep and fundamental questioning. We get to ask questions about what other ways are there? What else can we do with our time? What else can we do with our effort? And I think you've been freed from a path that was pre-etched for you, where you get the design degree, you go work at the agency, you win the award so that you can move to another agency, and potentially win another award and get that account. And hopefully one day, if you've done it all really well, you get to judge those awards. So, so this, this world, this, this pre-etched path for you doesn't exist anymore. And I think everything's changing, but ultimately it always has and it always will do. And, and that for me, that's, that's a relief. It's, it's so freeing to think that we don't have to do that anymore. And I think the duality of this time and, and these differing opinions, these differing ways of looking at the world is, is the human condition. It's, it's the lives that we choose to live. And for me, who better to deal with this condition than someone who can imagine a better future and move towards it? Someone who can create a vision. And for me, when I say vision, I mean everything that starts today and all of the days looking forward. So and I think understanding what next steps we need to take is going to require vision. And we're going to need people who can unleash their imagination and they can think about solutions to problems we've never seen before, that they can create tools that we haven't even made yet. And people who can create things that were never possible before now, before this moment that we live in today. I think we're in a great space because we need communicators. We need storytellers. We need to look into the future and when we look there, not to see something bleak, but to actually be excited. And I think we need to create better things. We need to create things that move people. We need to create things that make opportunities. And we need to create things that can heal our country. But saying all of this, I don't think it's going to be easy. It's going to require massive reserves of energy, reserves of patience, of grit, of willingness to test the bounds of the possible and the impossible. So along the way, you're going to make mistakes. Some of them are going to be small. Some of them are going to be massive. But each one will be valuable in their own way. Each will be an opportunity to grow and to learn. And I think what you need to do right now is to grow. We need to stem this tide of, of lacking and, and counter it with a narrative of possibility. We need to grow, and we need to grow in a sustainable way. So if I was standing in a room with you today, I would ask you to humor me a little bit and, and let me look back on, on some of the things that have stuck with me through this time. Because before you charge out there into the world and, and build the way forward, I think there's some things we can remember. One, Hold strong ideas lightly. Nobody wants to talk to the guy at the, at the party who has an opinion about nothing. Be the person who believes in something, who fights for it. Be the person who rallies people to something bigger than themselves, who loves something so much that you'd make enemies over it. But be willing to abandon those ideas and those opinions if you see a better way. Because don't let pride, ego, or fear attach you to something that you know isn't working anymore. Two, risk it all. There's so much time for you to build, to fail, and to build again. It seems the older I get, the scarier this prospect becomes. The weight of what I've achieved and what I've accumulated weighs me down. It anchors me to what I could potentially lose. But I want you to think about what you can gain instead, instead of focusing on what you could lose. Because there's opportunity. 
This is an opportunity to be bold. It's an opportunity to reinvent yourself. And I think it all starts in your mind. Three, plan for a bit and then jump. My favorite quote is from Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And plans are just something we've created to give us a false sense of control. So in creating something new, it's inherently filled with risk. And risk is filled with danger. So we need to jump. We need to jump into that danger and adapt as it comes at us. Because the future, after all, is not going to be created by bankers and accountants. They're the ones who created the present. And risk cannot be analyzed and it cannot be planned away because it is, after all, risk. So at some point, you have to step off that edge. You have to see what happens. But then again, I think nothing of mention was ever created in a straight line. Four, ideas without action are just words on a page. Share your ideas. Talk about them with anybody who will listen. Put them into action. Nothing kills a shitty idea like putting it out there into the world. And if you're anything like me, you would have had many shitty ideas. Make the things you see in your head. Put them into action. You'll be surprised by the results. And I think the key here is action. By sharing your ideas with people, they might even conspire with you to make them a reality. Five, be a joiner. Celebrate the success of others. Share in the joy when people do well. I think being cool and aloof is like a cancer. It grows quickly and it affects others around you. If you see something you love, go and tell the person who created it. If you see someone starting something, somebody trying something, go and check it out. And if you show up, show up hard. Show up with your full self. Because every single heaving dance floor, every passionate debate was started by one person who was met by another. And at some point, you are going to be doing something. And you're really going to appreciate somebody showing up for you. Six, be curious. Ask a million questions. Listen to the answers in a genuine way and then ask more questions. Because I fundamentally believe that curiosity is the cure to the human condition. I know you've just finished your formal education and I believe you've only just scratched the surface because you all have talent, but but talent isn't going to achieve anything unless you can convince people to let you apply to their problems. And the best way to do that is to truly understand what those problems are. My favorite thing about this work, this work we get to do, is that I get to learn new things almost every day. I get to explore the world. I get to glimpse into the lives of the people in it. And I get to create things that that respond to that and make those lives slightly better. In the end, they imprint on my life as much as I imprint on them. So I'm encouraging you to take an interest in the world. Question how we got here and dream up where we're going. But I think you probably already know that. Seven, have empathy. When I started the speech, I said the world is burning and I meant it. People are in need, they're scared, they need help. And luckily for them, Empathy is at the heart of every creative. It's our most effective and underrated tool. If you seek to understand people, to look at their perspectives and know that each and every one of them is just a human being trying to get a foothold in the world, you can use this empathy to build better things. You can build things that have the potential to make a difference in their lives. And maybe, just maybe, Your actions and your way of being will ripple out into the world and expand beyond your immediate circle. Eight, and this is probably my favorite one, laugh. Because for me, the first warning sign is when I stop laughing and I stop trying to make the people around me laugh, there's a problem. And if what you're doing doesn't fill you up, stop doing it. Everything we do is a choice. And one of the traps that I've fallen into is believing that I didn't have a choice. 
but I do. And, and I believe that I didn't have a choice in creating the situation that I'm in, in the work that I'm creating, and in the people that I'm spending my time with, but, but I do. Because all we do, all we have is our choices. Choose the things that make you laugh. Choose the things that fill you up. Choose the thing that gives you joy because when it sucks and when it gets hard and it will, you can always laugh, even if you're laughing at it as you walk towards something better. Finally, nine, be really good at being you. You are the only version of yourself. You're a unique, a unique collection of experiences, choices, thoughts, and even that occasional bad musical track that you don't want anyone to know that you listen to. And I encourage you to fill your time by working on things that you are passionate about. Find the problems that bother you and solve them. And I encourage you to spend time reflecting on what's important to you and then fill your time exploring that. I mean, what a way to live. Use your skills to shape the narrative that you want to see and get other people to care about it too. Because you can only you can do what you do best. It's your voice, it's your mind, it's your story. So I'm, I'm sharing this advice with you because Micah asked me to, and I can only assume that all the other people were busy, but, but I think that's a discussion for another day. So, so, but I'm also doing this for very selfish reasons. I'm doing it so that I can claim your victory so that I can share in your success. And ultimately, so that I can live in a world and a country that's been made better, better in ways that I could never fathom by people who created better things that I could never have conceived of. And even though I'm sitting in this room without you, just me and one camera guy, each and every one of you is sitting on a computer and you're listening to the speech. And on that computer, are all the tools you need, the tools to build, to design, to create, to make all the things that you can see in your mind. And that computer is connected to the internet and therefore it can reach all the people in the world. And I'm very optimistic that that computer and all the opportunity it represents when it's in your hands, you can do this, be creative. We need creativity right now. We need to create better careers, create better companies, create better products, create better things. Let's leave the world better than you found it. Good luck. By the power vested in me by the open window, I declare all those who are acknowledged by name during this virtual graduation ceremony to have their degrees conferred. The Visual Communication Design Program offers our graduates an exciting and sustainable career within the creative industry, an industry that is driven by the principle of possibility and innovation. Our graduates are entering a dynamic field that demands them to be courageous and bold in their creative endeavors, something which the Open Window Visual Communication Design degree has helped prepare them for. Beyond de having developed rigorous practical skills in the respective fields of photography, communication design, and illustration during the course of their studies, visual communication graduates enter the industry equipped with essential skills like creative problem solving, critical thinking, and visual storytelling, which are all vital in today's working environment. With these skills, our graduates are not limited to only refined visual works produced by capable creatives with a keen eye, but rather our graduates possess a skill to communicate messages through visual means um, that can reach broad audiences and that have the power to transform thinking. I'm proud to congratulate the visual communication graduates of 2019. They have proven that they are not scared to take on creative challenges and that they are interested in taking their skills to a higher level in order to make a larger creative contribution within our local context and beyond. I would also like to mention that students that receive their qualification cum laude will be announced. These students completed their qualifications within the minimum qualification time frame: one year for certificates, three year for degree, and one year for honors. These students also have an average mark of 75% or above, calculated according to the credit rating of the program.
The following students qualify with a further education and training certificate in photography. Henry Klaassens. Stephanie Cook. Jordan Francis. Frederick Mayberg qualifies cum laude. Nadine Rademeyer. Ruben Ruiz. Cameron Dimitriades. Bronwyn van Staden. The following students qualify with a certificate in design techniques. Riley Pugin. Henny Badenhorst. Bianca Chatwind qualifies cum laude. Arthur Chiu qualifies cum laude. Mitchell Klaassen. Jakobus Kluter. Danielle de Villiers qualifies cum laude. Tibojo Dlamini. Zakira Ibrahim. Alisa Stradum. Mignon Erasmus qualifies cum laude. Renschke Etzbeth qualifies cum laude. Ayola Goksko. Michelle Jacobs. Tafatswa Jova. Cabo Kikana qualifies cum laude. Mpo Korane. John Lewiso. Liandi Leroux qualifies cum laude. Cameron Mahadeo. Luther Maquetla. Lebohang Malatza. Nduduzo Manzi. Tevin Mariti. Diana Minga. Lucidi Pretorius. Ian Pretorius. Amochelang Rasebopie. Cheyenne Raseswe. Lauren Reynolds qualifies cum laude. Russell Mugumira. Dylan Swanepoel. Chepang Tobiane. Talik Thomas. Dominique Van Sale qualifies cum laude. Vanessa Vermark qualifies cum laude. Mene Vermeerlen qualifies cum laude. Alta Viljun. Dievan Foster. The following students qualify with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Visual Communication Design. Jessica Bachelor, Carmen Beaton, Lauren Bird, Andre Bormann, Christine Bosov, Cherise Buerta qualifies cum laude, Hannes Brink. Taryn Brummage, Arfa Burki, 
Chanel Coutier, Aidan Connold, Joe Coyne, Mika DeVette, Anisha DeVette, Gemma Duplessis, Vicky Duplessis, Yakuemi Grove, Chanel Hubert, Bontle Juku, Michelle Kruger, Mia Kuhn, Liaho Manjolele, Aileen Murray, Dan Min Moore, Tumi Nchapeleng, Nicole Oberholzer, Nanik Urendal, Christy Osborne, Angelique Phillips, Natalie Pierre Eugene qualifies cum laude, Camuchelo Pizzo, Nicole Reed, Daniel Rivas, Amber Rousseau, Yuani Scholtz, Jack Singer, Leoniki Smith, Elmin Smith, Erica Smith, Remy Smith, Chantal Smith, Zanurai Steenkamp, Jovan Stevens, Rene Swart, Liam Sweeney, Zarina Thonga, Stefan van der Riet, Danita van der Watt, Michaela van Driel, Nicola van Rensburg, Zander van Seil, Abigail van Seil, Tinas Fenter, Sonal Fenter, Ashley Vieira, Cameron Wacker. The following students qualify with a Bachelor of Arts Honours Degree in Visual Communication. Caroline Barnard, Andrea Broad, Joanne Grobler, Daria Creel, Delicia Liners, Larry Pilima, Daniela Rodriguez, Christy Sivrat, Hendrik Strumpfer, Ries van der Merwe.
I would like to invite our lecturers to please announce our top student awards for 2019. However, prior to that, I would like to outline the criteria for these top student awards. To achieve the top student award in certificate, the candidate must have completed the full course within one year. To achieve the top student award for the degree, the candidate must have completed a minimum of 120 credits per year for three consecutive years. To achieve the top student award for the honors degree, the candidate must have completed a minimum of 120 credits within a single year. We would like to congratulate Frederick Meyerberg receiving the top student award in our FET photography certificate. Frederick uh, averaged a 75% uh, at the end of his studies and as part of his award, he's receiving a 50,000 rand bursary to further his education at the open window. Our top student in the certificate program for design techniques is Renske Etzebet with an average of 81%. As part of Renske's award, she will be receiving 50,000 rand as a bursary to continue her studies at Open Window. The top student for the Bachelor of Arts in Visual Communication Design is Natalie Pierre-Eugene. Um, Natalie has achieved an overall average of 77% and has double majored in Communication Design and in Illustration. As part of Natalie's award, she will be receiving 50,000 Rand towards future studies at Open Window. Congratulations, Natalie. Congrats. The top student for the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Visual Communication Design is Christy Sieverite in 2019 with an average of 78%. Christy majored in Communication Design as part of the Visual Communication Design stream. And as part of the award, Christy receives a 2,500 Rand voucher from Exclusive Books. Thank you to all those who attended this flagship virtual graduation ceremony. In officially closing the ceremony, I would like to once again congratulate our graduates. Certificates and graduate gifts will be available for collection from campus on 21 September. Certificate, degree and honors top students are invited to collect their trophies where a member of our marketing team would like to take portraits of you holding your awards. Students who are in virtual campus, please throw your caps up in celebration. Thank you.